Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to discuss how to create verbal ability section in your CAT exam. So you know there are three sections and one of the section is verbal ability section and most of the students are quite confused about verbal ability or their English because they are uh, not they don't have that confidence to face this section because in general life what we see here and read the level of questions in CAT is not up to that or we find uh, or when we uh, when we practice we find that most of the answers go wrong so <coughs> We must know what type of questions are asked in verbal ability section, what is their level and how should we prepare for that, what should be our strategy. So here we are going to discuss all about these things that how to make your verbal ability section feel easier for you. So you know as per the last exam conducted in 2015, there were 34 questions in verbal ability section and that was given 60 minutes. It means in 60 minutes you have to attempt 34 questions. So almost 2 minutes, not complete 2 minutes. So for one question you had almost 2 minutes. And so it means we must have a strategy accordingly that we shouldn't waste much time attempting or say thinking about a particular question and uh, not attempting the other perhaps which may be the easier one for us. So we should keep this thing in our mind that's the first thing. Now the questions in verbal ability section are like this. Let's see the first question will be based on or one of the questions will be on reading comprehension and you may have three to four passages of 800 to 900 words. So to attempt this reading comprehension properly, we must have a good reading speed and also we must have a good comprehension speed. Now if you have been preparing for this uh, for a long time, so it's easy to acquire reading speed and comprehension speed and for uh, this you must read newspapers like the Hindu Economic Times, the Times of India, especially the editorial section in Hindu you have that perspective uh, page as well. So you should read these articles quite properly uh, and trying to enhance your speed, trying to increase your speed, trying to increase your comprehension of the certain topics. And <clears throat> moreover, you should also follow certain books in which variety of passages are given. Because unless you are familiar with variety of topics like uh, subjects like history, economics, science, technology, uh, culture, society, uh, you, you may find certain difficulty because all the four or five passages in your CAT exam won't be on one particular subject. They will be on different subjects. So if you have that familiarity with, with all these uh, subjects and topics, it becomes easier for us to attempt uh, the questions correctly. Otherwise, we may be at close not understanding the thing. We may understand a particular section or uh, passage like based on society or culture, but it may be that we don't understand the terminology in the economic Relate, uh, the, the passage related to economics or the passage related to technology or science. So we must brace ourselves, we must prepare for any type of any variety of uh, passage and we must be at ease attempting the questions there. So <clears throat> this is the another point and the, the questions in a passage may be inference based the questions in a passage may be related to the title it may be about the tone it may be about the style it may be about the central idea or what is true what is wrong this type of questions are also asked in passages so the one thing that you must do while attempting a passage is to read the introduction and conclusion part separately with a purpose keeping in your mind that I, I must understand the central idea of the passage because otherwise when you read it uh, in one go 
you you get distracted by the details given in the passage in the other paras it might be some comparison some contrast some analysis some uh, facts and figures and examples and as they are more than what is given in introduction and conclusion there there are chances that you get distracted by those details so it's always advisable to read the introduction and conclusion separately and try to find out the central idea of the passage once you get to understand the central idea of the passage half of the difficulty is removed because in <clears throat> in questions given on the basis of the passage if you understand the central idea um, you you can easily rule out uh, some of the options and then the task is quite easy now apart from that if you if you can read between the lines if you can understand the uh, inferred means uh, the implied meaning there so <clears throat> then the rest of the problem is also removed now if the questions are related to tone so you must focus on the adjectives used you must focus on the collocations and connotations that what kind of adjectives are uh, have been used whether they have positive association whether they have negative association where the collocations used have are the positive ones or the negative ones so <clears throat> if we have practiced this thing earlier if we know that what is collocation what is connotation if we know uh, the variety of tones that what is a positive tone what is a negative one what is a neutral one so there we don't have to uh, pressure ourselves we don't have to burden ourselves we don't have to trouble ourselves it you know, it becomes quite easy we read out the question and at once on the basis of the understanding of the passage we answer the question now if it is about style so you must know the variety of styles so read and find out that um, what are the variety of styles and uh, what do they exactly mean because the exact knowledge is also quite important here so you must know what is uh, argumentative style you must know what is narrative style you must know what is descriptive style you must know what is analytical style so if you know these variety of styles very clearly and you can point that out so here if any such question is based on style it becomes easy moreover uh, the questions about the figure of speech should also be quite clear because generally the questions asked are on the basis of paradox uh, irony and say <clears throat> oxymoron so these questions antithesis so the uh, questions on these figure of speech are generally there in the passages so if these terms are very much clear that what is a paradox what is an oxymoron what is antithesis what is irony what is sarcasm as well uh, so <clears throat> what is satire so if we know all these terms moreover euphemism can also be uh, there so if you are well aware of these things these terms so there won't be much difficulty then one more thing i mentioned is about the title so how to find out a proper and correct perfect title so read out the introduction again here that uh, the earlier technique will work the read out the introduction and conclusion in a proper manner think that what he has introduced and how he has concluded and that way what is the purpose of the writer here so if you are able to know and guess that then there won't be any problem you will hit at the right title so that's about one of the questions in your cat exam in verbal ability section so out of the four passages if you think your other sections are weak you can go for three uh, uh, passages as well you can attempt three passages in three passages there may be around 15 questions we can we can hope that five questions per passage may be there so if you attempt three passages you are attempting almost 50 questions but be sure of accuracy be cool and calm don't use more than 10 minutes to attempt a passage that too with accuracy so these things must be kept in mind so 
apart from the reading comprehension you may have para jumbles three to five questions three to five questions on para jumbles may be there in your exam now in para jumbles most of the students find that without series it is very difficult to arrange the sequence to arrange the given sentences in a or paras in a proper manner so <clears throat> in the last year uh, this type of questions didn't have any option the students have to write the option themselves so here what you have to do again i had to say the one thing that central idea is quite important so you must try to know the central idea second try to find out the mandatory pairs and third try to find out the clues given in each sentence or each para because in every para there would be certain hint for the next one it may be a cause effect chain it may be a reason or explanation uh, way that certain reason then the explanation of that is given and there may be some hints uh, like the conjunctions however and such therefore this type of conjunctions may also be there so if you get those hints it becomes quite easy to connect it becomes quite easy to make the series and then you must ask that why this after a or why this after b why not c or why not d if i put this then what will be the sense or what will be the meaning so if you go in that way if you understand this thing so para jumbles won't be a big problem but again uh, one more thing that don't waste your time if you don't get the answer in one go then it will be really a very time consuming ex exercise and you may perhaps lose your time and not having enough for the other questions so remember this thing next para completion in para completion you may have two to three questions and the blank may be in the middle of the sentence or in the end of the sentence there are these two ways generally the questions are given in that way so if it is in the middle of the sentence correlate with the former one and later one if it is in at the end of the sentence go with the flow of the sentence that what is the idea uh, can, um, given in the para what is the flow of thought and the last part or the last sentence that you choose to be used in the blank whether it concludes the para properly okay, whether it contains the essence of all what has been already said or earlier said if you think in that manner you may be sure that what you are choosing is correct because the main thing is to connect and correlate with the given one so there may be very minute in in the given options there may be very minute differences but unless you are focused and you think rationally in in a proper manner you may commit mistakes so uh, those who have practiced those who have attempted different exercises and then lots of questions now they they must understand this thing very well that every word every word and every phrase has a meaning and it's quite important that you should not take anything very lightly that every word should be paid heed to because if you don't pay attention to anything that then that may lead you to marking the wrong answer so i remember this thing apart from these three there are other questions as well so you may have questions based on fill in the blanks
here also you may have two to three questions and this is all related to your vocab so vocab to build a strong and good vocab definitely needs a long time a good strong practice so if you have had a good english or a good command uh, for your language then it becomes an easy task at this time but at at the time when you are your exam is just approaching but otherwise if you have only uh, say 10 or 20 days before your exam then one thing can be done just try to understand roots prefixes and suffixes how it works how to find out the meanings or guess the meaning on the basis of roots and prefixes and suffixes and try doing some exercises and in those exercises try to guess the meanings with the help of the roots and prefixes and suffixes so if you can do that and if you practice certain number of questions on the basis of that so in that way um, you you may get to know the correct answer so it may help you a lot in your exam but apart from these one more thing is quite essential uh, one more thing is quite necessary that is uh, what i earlier mentioned in the passage the collocations connotations and here one more thing that is the prepositional associations because after the blanks in most of the cases some preposition may be given so if you don't know that this word goes uh, collocates with that preposition or can be associated with that certain preposition you won't be able to mark the correct option because out of the four two or three may be there you may find having the same same meaning but still they may not be fitting in the particular blank because collocation is also important the two words may have uh, same meaning but may not be used in all the cases mutually or um, uh, in one in place of the other so that is because of the collocation just as i'll give you one example of collocation that wide and broad are two words having the same meaning but yet they cannot be used uh, or interchanged mutually i can say that white ball but i can't say broad ball i can say one is broad minded but i can't say one is wide minded so this is what we call collocation so you must try to understand this thing and while doing certain questions if you don't get to the correct answer that may be because of the lack of understanding of the collocation or the lack of understanding of the prepositional association so try to know this because generally what happens that you don't know how uh, or which word uh, can be associated with which certain preposition and apart from fill in the blanks we have questions on sentence correction here one or two questions may be there now generally the questions in sentence correction part or the questions based on sentence correction have the errors related to tense conjunction article preposition or idiomatic expression these are the generally asked questions which and the last uh, some exams have been frequently asked so it means you must if you don't find any error don't panic don't be afraid think separately of those errors that whether there is the error related to tense what tense should be used past is correct or past perfect should be used or present perfect should be used or simple past should be used it means you think over all that one by one what should be that what is the uh, tense given and what should be it 
and also what article art has it been used should it be there a should be there or the should be there the preposition now in case of preposition what happens that generally the students know only one particular meaning of a preposition that okay on on means touching the surface now it it is generally not so a preposition may have more than one meaning and usages so if you know those usages it becomes easy for you to understand the given sense understand the given meaning otherwise for example if i say he is on the plane now most of the students those who know only one meaning of on that on means touching the surface they may feel that he is on the plane is wrong because how can one sit on the plane one is always in the plane but actually the meaning is one is in transit one is sitting in the plane and the journey is going on so that way a preposition has many usages and it's our duty it's our responsibility of course if you are facing and attempting the question paper to know that how many usages are there in what way a preposition can be used and how uh, to uh, approach it in a proper manner so the last we can say is critical reasoning in critical reasoning one to two question may be there so in critical reasoning the questions are fijs facts inference judgment to know which is a fact which is an inference which is a judgment the definition of these three must be very much clear to you that what type of sentences can be termed as facts and inference and judgment so if you know the proper definition it becomes easy the easiest thing for you is this critical reasoning questions after uh, attempting or after practicing it properly you may never commit mistake in such type of questions and questions in critical reasoning may be about uh, which statement strengthens the given argument weakens the given argument which has that parallel reasoning or which has uh, which is the upstream uh, argument which is the downstream argument which is the parallel argument so these type of questions are generally asked in critical reasoning so it only needs of course as the question itself is termed critical reasoning so it wants or it expects from you to have that critical thinking process that you are able to come pair the facts uh, properly in an analytical manner and you understand uh, how or what kind of reasoning has been implied so if you have practiced all these varieties in a proper manner and if you know what time you take in attempting these questions it becomes quite easy for you to allocate proper timing for uh, all the questions and you may be sure that okay in this much time i can attempt this many questions correctly so as i said 60 minutes for 34 questions were there in the last exam 2015 here this year it may be just the same or maybe uh, some uh, as some indications or some news were there there may be 40 questions but no uh, further news about that so possibility is there they may change because there are changes in the question patterns every year so maybe some changes are there you must be prepared for all those changes and you must attempt the paper in a very cool and composed way if you panic if you um, just make haste there if you are worried and concerned then you may definitely an exam you won't be uh, you will be nervous and in that nervousness there are chances that you commit mistake so if you stay cool and calm half of the trouble is removed with that cool mind you can think properly and you can reason properly 
and if you can think properly there because it's all the matter of how much you prepare how much you um, go to coachings and discuss and uh, attempt papers it's all the matter of those 3 hours so if in those 3 hours you are calm and composed if in those 3 hours you can think properly if you can think rationally then i'm sure i can i can assure you that you you will score very good marks in your verbal ability section so uh, prepare for the worst hope for the best and i hope this may be of some use to you so thank you very much